Hey guys, Hackisploit here, back again with another video. and Welcome back to the web application penetration testing series. In this video, we're going to get started with brute forcing with BEP. All right, so our uh, vulnerable web application of choice is going to be the damn vulnerable web application, as we discussed in the previous video. All right, and I'm going to be using Metasploitable 2 as our, as my server. By default, you can install Metas uh, you can install the damn vulnerable web application on your Kali Linux, and you can host it on your local uh, on your local server. And you can uh, you can then perform your attacks. Uh, but I like running it from an, another virtual machine. And as you can see, I'm running it on the Metasploitable 2 virtual machine. And uh, by default, it's connected to my local network and it's bridged. So you can see that my local IP address is 192.168.1.102. All right, so I already have uh, the damn vulnerable web application open. As you can see, it is running on the, that IP address of the Metasploitable 2 virtual machine uh, under the damn vulnerable web application. So for those of you asking why I'm using uh, Metasploitable 2 instead of Metasploitable 3, it's because Metasploitable 2 has a, a much larger choice in terms of vulnerable web applications, and it's really good for practicing. All right, so make sure you're logged into your damn vulnerable web application. You need the, the default username is now password is password. All right, it's really very simple. And now what we're going to be going through uh, in, in this series, uh, the web, web application penetration testing series, is we're going to start off with brute forcing, command execution, CSRF file inclusion, SQL injection, and your cross-site scripting. All right, so we're going to sort it out that way. I thought it would be much better if we do it that way. All right, by default in this video, we're going to set our security level to low. If you don't know how to do that, you can go into your damn vulnerable web application security and you can set that to low and you can just hit submit. The reason we're setting it to low is because most uh, logins, are, you know, if you look at the real world, if you're talking about big sites, this attack may very well work on sites that are older or sites that have not been updated or sites that don't have good security. You'll be shocked to find some really big companies that are actually don't have any login protection or brute force protection for that matter. Now, that being said, what I was talking about is if we go into brute force, you can see that we have a login prompt here. Now, I've forgotten the username and password and we're gonna be brute forcing it live, all right? But before we do that, we need to actually start our burp, all right? So start up burp suite and you can see I'm using the community edition and it is the latest version, all right? So make sure that yours is the latest version, obviously for obvious reasons. And we're just gonna start a temporary project because I don't use the pro version and we're gonna hit use the burp defaults. We're gonna start burp, all right? Give that a few seconds to start the, uh, to start burp. And now you want to make sure you, uh, you're you using the proxy. So we're gonna go into preferences and advanced and uh, oops, uh, burp has opened up. Let me just go into my proxies, network settings, and we'll make sure that it's using the manual proxy configuration, which is the local host 127.0.0.1 and the port is 8080, we're gonna hit okay, excellent. Now we need to move into burp back again, and we want to make sure that we go into proxy and the intercept is set to off, all right? The reason we're setting the intercept off is because I just want to show you something first. Now by default, intercept essentially just means that you're not intercepting the request, uh, the requests and the responses being sent from the web application to your browser, okay? So we, the, we have already set the proxy for the browser, but we're not intercepting. So uh, if we just test a, a random username like test, and we say a password like one, two, three, four, five, you can see if I hit login, it's gonna tell me that that is incorrect. Now, if I set the intercept to on to see the request, let me just turn it to on, and we can now reload this, so we can say test, and the password one, two, three, four, five, we can see that uh, now it's, uh, for some reason, let me just forward that, uh, I have to actually just turn that off, and we now say log in, and for some reason that is not allowing us because we have to reload, all right. So now if I hit intercept on, and uh, whoops, let me just open up my browser and I hit the password 1345, log in. For some reason it's uh, going to, you know, it's gonna, it's not reloading here. Uh, I probably, there we are, all right. So I've reloaded the page and as you can see now the intercept is on and if we go back to burp, uh, you can see that we got the get request being sent by the web application. Now let's inspect it for a while. Now we'll be looking at what all of this really means, but by uh, by default, the most important thing right now is the get request, all right? So you can see that the get request has two values here. It has the username and the and the password. Now the, the values are, again are not important. We're going to be brute forcing the values, but it's very important to get the fields that we're using here. Now, what am I talking about here? If you look at the cookie, you can see the security is low. And if you are to edit the value and forward the packets, you can set it to high. That is basic stuff. That's kid stuff, right? 
but now we want to brute force this login. All right, and how do we do that? You can see uh, the first thing we need to do is we're going to be using the intruder. All right, so if you're a bit confused about what the intruder is, don't be worried. The intruder is, uh, essentially allow, uh, allows us to edit the parameters. It allows us to edit the requests and then uh, obviously edit them and manipulate them so we can get the desired re results. Now, the great thing about the, int uh, the intruder is it allows us to perform attacks like the brute force, etc., etc. All right. But now what we need to do is we need to send this request into the intruder so that we can send our own response. All right. So we're going to right click and send to intruder. So we just send it to intruder. And once it's sent to the intruder, you can just hit forward. All right. We don't need we, do, we don't need that get request anymore. So now you want to go into the intruder and you want to go into your uh, positions. And as you can see in your positions, you have got you have got uh, the get re request that we were we, we had just intercepted. And now you can see something really interesting. It's highlighted for you all the different payloads, okay, uh, or the different fields that we can brute force for. By default, we have the username value, the password value, the login value. We have the F, uh, the SFID value. We have the uh, the cookie value. No, no, no. We don't need all of these. The only values that we need are the username and the password value. So the most important thing you need to do right now is you need to clear. Just hit clear. All right. Uh, oops. Sorry. Not that clear. I, I beg. Uh, I know. I beg your apology there. Uh, I. Sorry. Uh, I didn't mean that. What I'm trying to say is, I'm sorry. Just clear. Just hit clear. And as you can see now, no values are being selected to be brute forced against. So now we need to select them manually. But before that, we're going to be using the uh, the cluster bomb attack type. All right. The reason we're using the cluster bomb attack type is because we are going to be using two values. We are brute forcing against two values. Remember that. Okay, and these need to be set in uh, in combinations. So that means it's much better to use a cluster bomb because uh, essentially you're clustering two values that need to be uh, that need to be tested against the login uh, the login application uh, or the login form together. All right, so in a combination. So we need to select cluster bomb, and now we need to select the values because those are the those are that is what we want to brute force again. So just highlight the value. Uh, it doesn't matter what the password or the username is just highlight it and you want to hit add all right so just hit add and as you can see we have selected that you now want to go into the password and you want to highlight that as well and you just want to add that as you can see now once we have added that those are the two values we're going to be brute forcing against make sure that none of the others are selected none of the other values once that is done you're you're almost there now now you want to go into your payloads all right now in your payloads you want to make sure that your payload set is set to two which is your username and your password. So let's start off with your payload set as payload one. All right, as your payload uh, type, make sure that that is a simple list because you can see we're only targeting usernames and passwords. So we don't need, uh, you know, a runtime file or we are not changing anything, uh, you know, dependent on Unicode, etc. You get the idea. Okay, so simple list. And now you go into your payload options, which is where you select your user list or your password list or your word list. Now, we are not using a word list, but if you want to, you can, if you're performing this on a real site, which I don't recommend unless you have written permission. Now, since we're using this in our penetration testing lab, we are going to just add the default usernames. As I said, the security of the site is low and it's not really a complex a brute force to crack. Okay. So what we want to do is we, uh, we want to make sure we have set payload set to one, which is going to be for our usernames. So now we can go into load where you can load your default uh, usernames and your passwords or your word lists. But by default, we're going to add our own. All right. So we're going to say, uh, whoops, we, we, for some, we're just going to say uh, we're going to type in and now like the commonly used usernames. All right. So something like admin. Uh, administrator whoops for some reason uh, actually let, let me just remove these uh, blank values there admin now administrator administrator let me just type that back in administrator uh, like so administrator for those of you telling me that my typing is bad that's because my microphone is right in front of me and I can't really see what I'm typing administrator uh, let's see what else what are the default ones like we have root um, we have password uh, actually we're not setting the passwords right now so we can just type in the default ones like this. All right. So we can say test, you know, the default ones, user one, whatever you think could be the most commonly used ones. Are okay. Or if you know what the username is, that is even better. So we're going to add all the usernames. All right. So we've added the usernames that we want to use. Now by default, again, I'm saying you can use a word list if you want to just go into load and select the word list. 
Now we want to select our passwords, all right? So we can go into the payload set two. And as you can see, now we can add our own values. Now we can use the default word list that come with Kali Linux. So if I go into my root uh, and I go into user, share, and we select word lists, uh, let me just find where word lists are. If I can find them, there we are word lists. And uh, the, the ones that work great for me are in the Metasploit folder. And you can look for the default uh, passwords. As you can see, you have your database default passwords. You have your default uh, user passwords for services. That's also great. It has a great list of, uh, of default usernames and passwords that you can use. But for me, I'm not going to use this because we are sticking to the basics now. Now, you want to add your own passwords. So we can select again some randomly, uh, you know, commonly used passwords. So pass, uh, you can say password. Um, let's see what else. Admin, you know, admin again. Uh, whoops, let me just remove that one. Admin, uh, root, you can use root. Uh, let's see, let me think, one, two, three, four, five. That's also one that I've seen many network administrators using. One, two, three, four, five, and you you get the idea. All right, so I've set our two payloads. Payload one is set for usernames. Payload two is set for passwords. Excellent, all right? Now, uh, we've selected our payload types. We've selected, we have added our payload options. We don't need to look at payload processing. That is advanced. Once that's done, what you want to do is go into intruder and start the attack. All right, and now it's going to tell you that the community edition of burp contains a demo version, but it's, it's essentially telling you that the process is going to be slow. All right, so we're going to hit OK and it's going to start the attack. As you can see, it's going through all the combinations. And as you can see, there are combinations that we have here are 25 and it's going to go through all of them. Now, one great thing that you need to do here or one important thing that you need to do is you need to understand the, uh, the, the status codes that the server or the web application is sending back. Now, that's a good way of, in, of understanding um, what password is correct and what, uh, what uh, username is correct and what password is not correct. Okay, so uh, if we look now at the uh, at, at the results, as you can see that it's finished, it's gone through the brute force attack. We check the status. The status is still the same. We have a status to 200. If we look at the length, all right, the length is going to be still the same, but you you have to look for things that are not uh, that are not matching. So, for example, you can see that uh, the length here that was returned was 4948, and it's not uh, it's not following the format of the others. So that means that this could be the username and password. Uh, don't worry about the status. The status will still remain the same uh, regardless of that. But when we'll be looking at advanced server penetration testing, that's something important. So you can see that the get uh, that we've got here is very important. Now, if we look at the, uh, if we look at the response that will be sent, uh, right there, you can see the, the response. And if we render it, you can see that if it was successful, it will tell us that we've logged in successfully. So let me just browse down all the way. As you can see, welcome to the password protected error admin. And there you go. That is the username and the password. It is admin and password. Now, again, this was really simple. Again, you can you can increase the security if you're practicing on your own. But you can see that this really works. And this is how to utilize burp for advanced stuff like brute forcing. Now, again, most uh, of the advanced websites nowadays have great content management systems that have the security plugins that essentially prevent you from brute forcing or lock you out. But most of the older sites, you'll be you'll be actually quite shocked to find out that uh, their brute forces, uh, the, their login forms, sorry, are not protected. Now, we have already logged in and you can see that the default username is admin and the password is password. OK, so you can look at the raw uh, the raw HTTP here, you can look at the request and the response. Um, uh, you can look at them and you can inspect them if that's what you do. And you can look at the headers, what's being sent, all that good stuff. But that was going to be it for this video. And now if we just go back into burp, uh, let me just go into my proxy and I'm going to in, uh, disable intercept and we can try and log in here. So we know that the admin, the username is admin and the password is password. So let me log in and welcome to the password protected admin area. Fantastic. We have performed our first brute force. I hope uh, you know you found value in this and uh, we'll be moving al along into more advanced and we'll be moving on that way. All right. So we're going to be following this format right here. All right. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for all the support. More videos are coming out. I'm really motivated to make even more videos and even better videos. So thank you so much for the support. If you found value in this video, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can be, hit me up in the comment section on my social networks or on my website. All right. So thank you so much for watching this video and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.
Thank you.